to do today is read from the account from the book of Luke about the thief on the cross, about this event, this about three hour event that happened when Jesus was crucified and these individuals were with Jesus and what happened, what transpired there. This is from Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 49, but I also included your, in your notes the accounts from the other Gospels, like Matthew 27 and Mark 15 and, and John 19, because I'm going to mention a couple of things, and the things that I mentioned may not be in Luke, but they are in the other chapters that will help us to see and to understand and appreciate exactly what has gone on here and is going on. But we're, we're going to begin here in Luke chapter 23, and I want to read the entirety of the um, pericope here. This is beginning here in verse 32, speaking of the two individuals, the two malefactors that were prophesied. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the Skull, where they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on the right, the other on his left, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others? Let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him, and they offered him wine vinegar. And he said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our de deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth today, you will be with me in paradise. So that is the scenario that we see, the things that happened with Jesus and crucifixion. So let's take a look at some of the questions, and I'll put my reading glasses back on so I can read the questions that I had laid out for us to understand, is the malefactors, and rightly so, um, one of, the, of these, they, they were bad guys. Uh, that just has to be the situation there. But one of them acknowledged his wrong. Their view of Jesus was from their own crosses, and we, we kind of have to think about that. They are the only ones who had a different view of Jesus. They were looking out over what Jesus was looking out. They were hearing up close what Jesus heard up close. They also heard Jesus talk and, and speak and what he had to say and saw his expressions and his reactions to all the things that were happening. So everybody else, only those three, had that particular view. And then, like Jesus, they were not coming down from the cross alive. Uh, they knew that. Of course, Jesus knew that he would not come down from the cross alive because of what was set before him, what he was doing for his sheep. They also, and we may 
may not think about this, consider this, but we recognize that they would live long enough to see Jesus die on the cross because Jesus died before they did. And we'll tell you why we know that and understand that as well. Uh, they were thieves, and they heard, you know, also, this is one of the other things, they're going to hear the reaction of not only a Roman centurion, they're also going to hear and see the reaction of the people after Jesus' death. Now, one thief turned to Jesus before his death. And this is the man we're talking about today. The thief on the cross who has a name. The other thief, though, did not turn to Jesus in that moment, in that time, in the final moments of his earthly existence. And so we're going to take a look at the difference there that we find here. So here are the points that we want to take a look at, beginning here in verse 39. One thief continued to rail upon Jesus. He was sneering. He was, you know, imagine yourself, you're, you're dying. But we have to understand and imagine what it is in, in dying. When we think about people who find out that they're dying, we, we talk about the stages that people go through. And one of those would be anger, and people, it would be a natural tendency to be very angry, not only for what you have done, but the fact that you're not going to get out, and for the people who have caught you, and are causing you to go through this particular pain. But if you read the account, one of the things you must recognize is that both thieves, both malefactors, both criminals jeered Jesus. It isn't just one. They both did it, but one stopped. One stopped. And that's the man that we're going to talk about today. Because when you read the other accounts, it talked about how they cleansed their teeth. They were like the others, you know, like uh, jeering at Jesus. And of course you see the, the contingency of people who are doing these things. Not only the Romans, but also his own countrymen were doing that to him and jeering. And I would say that I think we can pretty well determine that all the jeering was not focused on either one of the criminals on the right or the left hand side, but rather it was focused on Jesus. And all the spitting and all the things that they were directed totally at them, at, at, at Christ, and for them in a way it drew the attention to Jesus at that particular moment or those particular hours that Jesus was being crucified and giving up his life for us. So the one continues this process of, and then the word they use is railing on him for who he was and sneering and making fun of, uh, of him. And saying such things, as, if you be the Christ, this is a, a challenge to Jesus. If you be the Christ, then they're also smearing his name, who he is. And we find that. Then in verse 39, the one thief, the one malefactor says, save yourself. Because obviously his thinking is, there is hope, no hope for us if you be this Messiah, if you don't save yourself. Save yourself and then save us as well. Come down off of the cross and save us. That's his approach at that time. Then we go on to verse 40 here and we find that the fellow thief rebuttal of his Accomplice. I don't, you know, I don't know that they're accomplices and the like, but they're both in that category of being malefactors. And so he begins his rebuttal, and he begins it by telling him, "Don't you fear God?" Now, this has, in some sense, not as much attention drawn to Jesus as it is a belief that there is a God. Mm -hmm. 
feeling the blues today, or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life, or need spiritual advice? The Worldwide Church of God is located in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto, California. We welcome everyone to attend our worship services with us every week at the times listed on your screen.